Hello, welcome to Statistics for IT Managers in Mini 5, that is the first half of the summer of 2023. I am this guy, John Ostland, and I will be your instructor for this course. I will see you in person, most of you, I hope, on the evening of Monday, May 15th, for the first lecture. I would like to go through the syllabus in this video so that we don't have to spend time going through this bureaucratic administrative stuff uh, in class. Uh, let's start out by describing what the course is. This is an introdu introductory course in data analysis and statistical inference. And if you're not sure what statistical inference is, you will, you will learn that as part of what we're going to discuss. The idea here is to enable anyone uh, who is entering a management or policy analysis kind of position to have the statistical knowledge and tools for analyzing and interpreting and making decisions about uh, data. If you are planning to take more advanced courses in statistics and machine learning at Heinz or elsewhere, again, uh, one of the purposes here is to provide you with the foundation that you need in statistics for these future courses that you might take. There are three components to the course. We're going to start out talking about what's called descriptive statistics which is simply a matter of either numerically or graphically representing data in some hopefully useful way for a decision maker to look at. Then we're going to look at statistical inter inference, which allows us to take samples of data that we have taken from some population of interest and make deductions about things like mean values and standard deviations of values, uh, once again, to try to make an uh, informed decision. And then finally, we'll take a look in the third part of this at uh, linear regression, both involving a single variable and involving multiple variables. Okay. So we're going to take a look at both the calculation and interpretation of uh, statistics based on data that we have uh, collected. Okay. All right. Well, I think the rest of that paragraph you can read. <laughs> Let's continue on. Uh, so as I said, I'm this guy, John Ostland. I will have official office hours each Saturday afternoon uh, by Zoom. So uh, as many people as wish can participate all at once. And those office hours will be from 3.30 to 5.30 each Saturday afternoon. I'll be available by email pretty much all the time, uh, certainly between... 10 in the morning and 8 in the evening, seven days a week. When I have a class in session, uh, I'm always working. I may be slightly slower to respond on the weekends, but I'm generally working on the weekends to get ready for the following week. And I will try to respond to you within at most 24 hours. I usually am able to respond more quickly than uh, 24 hours. If I'm unable to answer a question that you have by email, or if you would like to have a more uh, interactive kind of discussion, I'm also very happy to set up one-on-one -on -one Zoom meetings with you, and we'll simply have to work out a mutually convenient time uh, to do that. Lectures for this course are going to be roughly from 6 to 9 in the evening on Mondays. And lectures will always take place in Hamburg Hall, room 1005, uh, on the first floor in Hamburg Hall. We will also have, on Friday, 
a problem-solving session that I will be conducting from approximately, well, it'll, we'll definitely start at 9.30 in the morning and go to 10.50, more or less 11 o'clock, again, in the same room. Um, now, we have the unusual uh, problem with these Monday lectures, which is that during the six-week period, both weeks three and week six, that is May 29th and June, June 19th, are federal holidays, and Carnegie Mellon is closed on those days. Uh, there is the Memorial Day holiday on May 29th and the Juneteenth holiday on June 19th. So for those, well, for every lecture, I will produce a pre-recorded video covering all of the lecture materials, uh, which you can use as a, uh, as a review of my in-person lectures, uh, or as an alternative to my in-person lectures, if you prefer. And on those two particular days, uh, May 29th and June 19th, uh, as I say, the university is closed, and, and I will not be holding classes those days. So I will ask you to watch my pre-recorded videos uh, for uh, week three and week six. We will be ably assisted by a TA for the course. Uh, Jin Yu is going to be helping me, for the most part, with grading homework assignments and labs or worksheet assignments, uh, as well as the quiz that occurs uh, at the end of week three, midway through the uh, course. You should feel free to... <coughs> Uh, contact Jinyu by email if you have questions about uh, anything to do with the course or the homework or what have you. Now we do have what I'll say is an optional textbook for this course. What should I say about this textbook? <laughs> so this textbook is a you know good standard giant, fat American textbook with lots of colored pictures and a gazillion exercises that you can do. The most recent edition is either the 14th or 15th edition. Uh, but to be very honest, this material about descriptive statistics, probability, statistical inference, and regression... None of the mathematics of this stuff has changed in decades. The statistical software available now is much more convenient to use uh, than what was available years and years ago. But there isn't really any, uh, you know, mathematics or concepts that are that are new. So this thirteenth edition is actually an older version. And if you poke around online, you ought to be able to get yourself either a used copy of that or a PDF copy of that for, well, certainly less than 30 bucks, let's say. Uh, you might be able to find a used copy, you know, for as little as 20 bucks or 10 bucks or a PDF for, uh, you know, 30 or 20 or whatever. Um, do not waste your money on a new uh, edition of this uh, book, and using an older edition is perfectly fine. Uh, the lecture slides, the homework assignments and labs, the so-called worksheets, all the data sets and so forth, this stuff is available on Canvas and also available in a statistical analysis package uh, developed by a Carnegie Mellon professor, Philip Burkhart. Uh, that we'll be using, uh, that I recommend that you use for uh, for your actual numerical and graphing uh, work. Okay, now there are tons of statistical analysis packages available out in the world. Of course, uh, you could do a lot of this stuff in Excel. You could use R. You could use Minitab. Uh, on and on, blah, 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 Python libraries, whatever. But I'll 
is extremely easy to use, and the IL accounts that we have had set up do include already all of the data sets that we will need for examples and homeworks and uh, labs and so forth. So I, I strongly recommend that you go ahead and use IL, uh, uh, particularly for anything that you submit as far as homework. How will you be evaluated? Okay, well, uh, we will have problem worksheets approximately weekly, although we will not have uh, we will not have anything due week four uh, because oh, this is incorrect. Weeks two, three, five, and six. This is incorrect. My apologies. This should say one, two, four, and five. Um, in the summer, this is a six-week course, and since our lectures are going to be on Monday nights, the lab stuff is all going to be due by Thursday at the end of week, week one, week two, week four, and week five. In weeks three and six, are when we will have our midterm exam and our final uh, exam. Uh, I, I have the correct dates for all of these uh, problem worksheets uh, later on. In any event, you're required to uh, fill out these uh, worksheets, and we will review uh, during our Friday sessions uh, what you have done on these problem worksheets. And completing these problem worksheets will be worth 20% of your overall course grade. <clears throat> now, about the worksheets, uh, you are required to submit your solutions uh, by Thursday before midnight. However, we are not going to actually grade the correctness of what you produce on your worksheet. This is a a lab. It is a, you know, a trial uh, kind of thing. And we want you to do your best and we hope that you will get everything correct on the worksheet. But in terms of how you're going to be evaluated for the worksheets, we're only going to evaluate you on whether you did submit something uh, reasonable on time. If you don't submit on time or if you just submit random garbage <laughs> will <laughs> we'll take off some uh, some points probably. <clears throat> okay, so that's the first uh, 20%. There are also going to be four homework assignments, uh, and each of these is going to be worth 5%, so that's another uh, 20%. Um, and these we will grade uh, carefully. So these you do need to work on uh, carefully and try to be as correct uh, as possible. Now, we will allow you to do both the worksheets and the homework assignments uh, as part of a group. Uh, we want to limit group sizes to at most four people. Ideally, the way to handle any of these assignments, the worksheets or homework, is you want to try to do as much as you can yourself first. And then once you have finished or if you have found that you're stuck on one or two or three uh, problems, at that point, then compare what you've done with uh, other people that you know in the class. Um, you're actually permitted to communicate uh, with anybody that you want to. Uh, so the, the ceiling on the group size of four people, that's the most people that we want working together in terms of, you know, we want at most four people to submit identical homework assignments. Each, each person must submit, but it is okay for each person in a group to submit homework identical to the other people in the group. You just have to identify who the group members uh, are, okay? And so these homework assignments will be worth 
another 20%. Now, the midterm quiz that will happen at the end of week three is going to be worth 25% of your overall grade. And the final exam, which will occur on the very last day of the course at the end of week six, is worth 35%. All right, so I already mentioned the worksheets um, where we want you to try hard and to do as well as you can, but we are not going to grade on a point-by-point -point basis what you do on your worksheets. We will grade the homework assignments more carefully if you work as part of a group uh, you need to include in your submission not only your own Andrew ID but also the Andrew IDs of the other people that are part of your group uh, this way if you have you know if you're working with a group of one or two or three more people it's okay to submit for each person in that group to submit identical homework submissions um, as long as we know who the people in that group uh, are. All right? Here are the specific uh, things you will be graded on and the dates by which these things must be uh, submitted. Okay, so worksheet one has to be submitted just before midnight on this coming Thursday, May 18th. Homework 1 needs to be submitted just before midnight on Sunday, uh, three days later. I, I want people to submit homework on Sunday night <clears throat> so that you then have some time to prepare for uh, the lecture on the following Monday night. Uh, I don't want people to be fighting with homework right up until the lecture starts so that you're you know, totally wiped out and unable to pay any attention to what I'm saying. You should, you should, you should instead feel relaxed and comfortable and happy. And then, if you choose, you can not pay any attention to what I'm saying anyway. <laughs> but there we go. Okay. Uh, so we have a worksheet on Thursday and a homework on Sunday in week one. Then a worksheet on Thursday and a homework on Sunday in week two. The midterm will be on Friday uh, during our regular review session time uh, on June 2nd. There won't be any worksheet or homework due that week. Uh, then we will have a worksheet and homework uh, the following week and a worksheet and homework the week after. The final exam will, as I said, be on the very last day of the course, Friday, June 23rd. Okay, some frequently, or ah, I should say, <laughs> ah, frequently asked questions. Do you curve the grades? Well, um, not on an assignment-by-assignment assignment basis, okay? Um, we provide numeric scores for each worksheet, each homework assignment, for the quiz and for the final exam, and those numbers just are what they are. But when the course is entirely over, based on uh, these percentages that we talked about, 20% for the worksheets, 20% for the homework, 25% for the quiz, and 35% for the final, uh, Heinz College uh, uh, requires me to apply a curve uh, to compute the final letter grades. Uh, <clears throat> Heinz College's grading standards uh, require me, despite what I might prefer, <laughs> require me to give an A- as an average grade and other grades to be, you know, above or below that, uh, that A-. So uh, just, just so you're warned, all right? Um, don't cheat. Uh, you are allowed, as I said, to work with each other on the worksheets and the homeworks. On the midterm quiz and the final exam, these have to be your own work, uh, you know, without chatting with other people, without emailing other people, uh, without using chat GPT or, or, uh, uh, 
Stack Overflow or any other uh, things you might be tempted by, you will be able to use a statistical analysis package such as Isle <clears throat> to uh, perform computations. Um, but other than that, you're not allowed to uh, use other resources. Now, there are severe penalties for cheating, so don't do it, all right? You could have your grade lowered considerably at the, uh, you know, at, at least, and at worst, you might be, uh, you, you might be terminated from the university, so just uh, don't do it. Uh, it also, you know, it won't help you because even if you get apparently a good grade in this course, the minute you go talk to an interviewer and uh, pretend to know something about statistics, they will figure out very quickly that you actually don't. So it uh, it won't help you to go to get a good grade if you don't know the stuff. Uh, what about COVID? Well, at present, uh, the university has no uh, policies in place about COVID. Uh, everything is subject to change, and so if that does change this fall, for example, well, this is just a summer-long course, so probably nothing is going to change between now and the end of June. But, you know, I will let you know if something does change in that uh, regard. Uh, we will not accept late homework, uh, be on time. Uh, I will make an effort to remind you to be on time, but I strongly recommend that you put on your own calendar or program into your own timers on your phone uh, to submit homework before the deadline. Uh, every class, somebody for some uh, random reason uh, forgets to turn in an assignment on time, and it's a uh, it's a very unfortunate uh, thing. So just, uh, you know, make notes to yourself. You may, if you feel that we have done something wrong uh, in terms of grading an assignment, you may request a regrade. Um, you have to do this in writing by sending an email both to me and to our TA. Uh, and that has to happen within seven days of when you get back your graded uh, assignment. You have to provide a clear explanation of why you believe the regrade is necessary. Uh, I want to point out that if we are requested to regrade something on your assignment, we will regrade the entire assignment, not just the little piece of the assignment that you point out. And so... You know, so there's a risk that we may discover some other problem that we didn't notice previously, and it's possible that your grades could decline rather than uh, rise. Um, okay, so uh, the first regrade will be done by our TA. Uh, if you are unhappy with that regrade, then renegotiate with the TA, and if you're still unhappy, uh, contact me. Um, if the TA turns you down twice, your probability of me agreeing to you is, is frankly kind of limited, but I will, you know, I will take a look. Um, we're generally only going to raise scores in situations where we have made some kind of mistake. We're not going to be tolerant of, uh you know, requests for more points just because you would like to have more points. Okay, well, I... I <laughs> that's an embarrassing and frustrating uh, topic, but there we go. Now, if you do have some kind of disability uh, for which you have uh, or for which you would like some kind of accommodation, you do need to contact the Disability Resources Office and discuss with them what kind of accommodations uh, you need, uh, then they will inform me 
of what accommodations uh, you have uh, you you have uh, worked out with them, uh, and I will uh, follow whatever their recommendation uh, is. Um, you may not contact me directly and ask me to make an accommodation. Uh, under university policy, all such requests have to go through the Disability Resources Office uh, so that individual professors are not, uh, uh, I, I don't know, treated like ping pong balls in terms of having to make individual decisions about uh, what accommodations uh, are required. I, I am very happy to, uh, uh, you know, to abide by whatever accommodation uh, you and the Disability Resources Office uh, agree upon. Um, we do have a counseling and psychological services uh, group uh, who are extremely good. If you find yourself, you know, overwhelmed, stressed out, if you've had uh, some kind of health disaster in your family that's getting you down or or your own health problem that just abruptly appears or whatever, uh, you know, there are an awful lot of reasons why people who are striving and working hard can, can, uh, uh, can face challenges. So uh, keep in mind that uh, uh, the good help is uh, available. All right, now here's a little more detailed breakdown of the course outline. Uh, I don't think I'm going to read through each item in here one by one, but generally speaking, we're going to start out by looking at descriptive statistics. These are uh, pictures and tables, basically, uh, as well as basic probability co computations. Uh, that's the foundation that we that we really need to uh, do anything with statistics. And that will occupy the first two weeks. Then, well, actually the first three weeks, um, although the end of the third week will be our midterm uh, quiz. Then, once we have got uh, probability uh, and... Uh, probability distributions uh, covered, we will know enough that we can start doing hypothesis testing. That is, we can start asking questions like, um, if we apply this remedy uh, to some group of people with some problem, uh, can we measure that that lessens their problem or increases their you know, increases the uh, health or happiness or whatever of uh, of that population. Uh, so that will that hypothesis testing and uh, statistical inference will begin on week four and go through well, I guess okay, so we're gonna look at confidence intervals. Uh, without really getting into inference uh, during week three. Then we'll get into inference of making uh, making educated statements about, you know, whether, whether some treatment is effective and the probability with which we believe it's effective, these kinds of things in uh, uh, the hypothesis testing and inference in, in week four. Uh, then weeks five and six will be devoted to looking at linear regression, both single variable linear regression and multivariable linear regression, uh, in order for us to make predictions about uh, about things. All right, so that is an overview of the syllabus, and. Uh, you know, if you have any questions about anything, uh, shoot me an email. Uh, I'll be happy to respond. Take care.